Hello, Agent Friends, it's Mr. Fisher. Got a meeting here for you today. We're gonna to call this Agent Acceleration. This is week one. I'm gonna talk a little bit about social media basics. And this is one of the first steps to creating a solid brand. Letting people know who you are and not being what some folks call a secret agent. Don't be a secret agent. So without further ado, I'm going to share my screen here. And we're gonna jump in and get started. Okay, so we want to talk about Agent Acceleration first. Agent Acceleration is a program where we are going to walk you through and show you how to take the fear out of, out of social media, how to keep up with things without drowning in the, or falling down the rabbit hole to the point where you feel like you're, you're not getting anything accomplished. Um, the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna focus on what works, what perhaps doesn't work, and we're going to help show you how to provide value to your sellers and find more clients, more buyers, and find people that know, like, and trust you, as opposed to spending all your time chasing strangers. Hopefully, you're going to brand yourself and chase friends, people that are in your area, people that you already got a lot in common with, with and people that know people you know. So, week one, uh, we want to talk about getting your brand out there. And I, I have a friend, a title guy, who always talks about not being a secret agent. Uh, if I Google your name and I can't find you, then I would say that you're a secret agent. You perhaps don't have your profile listed on Facebook, on your website, on LinkedIn, on Instagram, on anything you do you don't have your information listed. People don't see your name. They don't see real estate agent. They don't see realtor. So if someone tries to find you, can they find you? That's question number one. So now, where are you at? Where are your profiles at? Do you have your profiles on all these places? Now, here, here's what I want to ask you this week, and this is really what this week's course is about. Ask yourself, did you go to Google this morning? Did you go to LinkedIn? Did you go to Facebook? Which one of those three did you spend more time on? I know for many of you, for myself, just like the rest of America, 275 million people were on Facebook for four and a half hours a day. So like the Little Mermaid says, I want to be where the people are. I want to be seen. I want to be known. I want people to engage with me. I want to be friendly with them, of course. Um, I don't want to get sucked down the rabbit hole of, of getting distracted, but let's face it. Are people spending four and a half hours on Google? Are they spend four and a half hours on LinkedIn? No, they may go to Google to search something specific, like your name. If they already know you and they need to find you and they Google you, you better pop up. Or perhaps they want to find you on LinkedIn if they need you for business. But ultimately, to build your brand, the best place to do this is Facebook because that's where your brand can get seen the most for the least amount of money. So that leads me to having a mindset about this. If you're going to be effective with social media, you want to be personal. Of course, you want to remind people that you do business, but spend your time being social. Interact with people where they're at. Watch people talk about current topics, about things that are funny, about their family. Be personal, be social. It's called social media, not advertising media. Now, the best way to truly get your message out there, if what you're trying to do is build your brand through social media, is to have a targeted approach. So even though I just said you wanna be personal and you wanna be engaging, don't run out and, and just chat with people all day every day about whatever topic pops up. I mean, that's good, but that's where you can get sucked down the rabbit hole. So, step one to having a target approach is to fill the stadium. And what this means is having more people that you're connected with, having more friends. So, the easiest way to start doing this is literally just to start adding people when you meet them, when you talk to them, when you're on the phone. Uh, this used to be perhaps a little more taboo two or three years ago, but things have evolved. It's okay to meet somebody once or twice 
at a coffee shop, at a BNI meeting, at another event, and just find them on Facebook and add them. In many cases, you'll find these days they have lots of friends. So ask yourself, how many friends do you have right now on Facebook? Are your past clients your friends? Are your best past customers your friends? Are your friends from high school your friends? If you're a salesperson, especially in real estate, and you have no friends and your profile is fairly closed and personal, how are people going to find you in the four and a half hours a day that they're spending engaging on Facebook? So step one, very simple, is just start adding more friends. Heck, nowadays, Facebook reminds you that you have friends and they tell you to add them. So that actually, that part is not very hard. Um, so if you, let's say that you've, you've got your stadium full. What I want you to do next is think of Facebook as if it were a TV show. So people are watching their news feed, same thing as if they're, they're watching Outdoor Man, they're watching a comedy show. If you start putting too many commercials in your news feed, look, I spelled commercials wrong as I was typing this up, <laughs> then it's going to get boring. Nobody's going to engage with you. So you've got your stadium, now you're going to give them a show. All right, now let's break down how this works. We talked about building your audience. The next thing we want to do with this audience is really focus on what our ideal audience is. Uh, down at the bottom of the slide, I have A, B, and C. This comes from a real estate coaching program that my uh, friend Jerry has been sharing with me. I don't remember the name of the program, the Yes Network or something like that. Um, but ultimately, what Jerry was doing and what I've seen other agents do is break down his spheres of influence, his sources of business into lists. You know, who are my best referral sources, my uh, best friends when it comes to me building my real estate business, who are my second best, and who are kind of cold sources. So, you know, essentially having A, B, and C lists. Now, I've seen some agents sort this out using their CRM. I've seen some agents sort this out using just Evernote, and some agents just keep it in their head. But the reason that I went through this ABC step is that when you're engaging with people on Facebook, if you've determined that people in this A group are much more likely to help you in your career as far as referring friends of yours because they're very close to you, they refer to you a lot of people in the past, they're past clients that you think are ideal, they have lots of other friends that perhaps are ideal, this is where you should be spending most of your time. So, let's say you built your ideal audience, um, you're capped at 5,000, but again, ask yourself how many you have. I know some realtors that already have 5,000, and I know some that have 500 or 1,000, do all these people in your audience see your message? No, they don't. The way Facebook works, only a portion of your audience sees the message every day. And generally, from what we're told from the Facebook reps that we work with at our company, um, we actually do have a Facebook rep at Hancock Mortgage Partners. Uh, it's somewhere between 40 and 100 people that is in your ideal circle that see most of your messages. So that's... Again, I'm talking about ideal clients, your circle, your closest group of people online is probably going to be somewhere between 40 and 100. So every time that you post, the odds of all 1,000 or all 5,000 of your friends seeing everything that you post is not good. But the people that are closest to you perhaps will. Now, this is, I might have sorted these a little out of order, but I said engagement matters. And here's where I'm going with this. The folks that you engage with the most on your, your lists are the folks who are gonna see the majority of your posts. So, how do you engage with them? You go to their profile, take a look at what they've got posted, you like something on their page, you comment on something on their page, if you find something really good, you share it on your own page. That is the best way to build engagement and it's the best way to build your own ideal audience. So, you may have already filled your stadium, you might have a thousand friends, but again, not all thousand are going to see your message. So, so if I've got, like in my world, real estate agents are really my, one of my preferred contacts because they help me find my mortgage clients. So if I'm going to spend time on social media being intentional, I might want to jump over to a real estate agent's page and comment and like their post, perhaps share their post, or um, basically interact with them. So I know next time I post, the chances of them seeing 
things in my social media sphere go up because I've interacted with them. Um, so the more that you interact with people on Facebook, the more likely they are to see what you're posting and the interactions that you're putting out there. So again, if you're make you're running it like a TV show and what you say and do is informative, helpful and engaging and you want people to see it, well you engage with them first, then they're going to see you in return and and basically your show. They're going to be part of of your world. So, that's kind of what I was just talking about here. You're building momentum by interacting with the people that you're connected with and the people that are ideal to you. And again, you may have 2,000 friends, but interact with the, the 50 to 100 that you're most likely to want to work with, to the folks that you're, you have an affinity to, that they're good friends, they're ideal clients, they're ideal referral partners, you really, really like them. Spend more time interacting with those people when you get a chance. Now, I know some folks that will go through their whole list and try to interact with everyone. That can work. But just keep in mind that the more intentional you are about interaction, the more likely you are to have folks reach out to you through social media. All right. Now, I just talked about this for two slides, so I might have got a little bit out of order. But when you like, comment, and share other people's posts, your status or, or your message when you're posting, essentially, your goes up. The ability for folks to see what you're posting gets a lot more attractive as you are engaging through, through Facebook. So if you're somebody that just sits there and scrolls all day for four hours, you're not going to get as much interaction on your own posts as someone who actually engages. That's kind of one of the big secrets and that's how social media works. You do have to engage. Now here's the big secret and this is one of my biggest secrets and this works for me extremely well. The best way to get people to interact with you through social media is by sending them messages on Messenger. If you're sending people messages on Messenger, you're going to find that, that perhaps a year or two ago, people barely looked at it or read it, but people are really paying attention to their Messenger. Now, Messenger has almost become what email was a while ago. There was a time when only your best friends had your email address. Now, of course, everybody in America has your email address and companies and spam and all that kind of stuff. Most of the time, the messages that you get through Facebook from your friends are extremely meaningful and they're, again, good messages from people that you know. You, you usually want to look at them and, and interact. So if you have folks that you're, very, that you're connected to and they can potentially refer your business and you know them, why not send them messages every once in a while to ask them how they're doing, to see how their kids are, just, just to check in. If you see something on their page, you can go like it on their page, but you can also send them a message and say, hey, that was really cool what your kid did at that soccer game and put a smiley face. Those kind of interactions through the messenger tend to, number one, start longer conversations, and number two, like I said, they increase your, your ability or your weight through Facebook for when you're posting – people to see your messages. Um, now, one of the second best things to do, we just talked about liking, commenting, and, and sharing. One of the, the next best things you can do next to messaging is sharing and tagging names in the replies. So, if one of your friends has posts where they're talking about something that's geographic or related to a certain type of food or reminds you of somebody else, you can make connections by tagging. This is pretty simple, basic stuff, but I see a lot of people that don't do it, that, that don't engage, and then they wonder why other agents are telling them social media works and it's not working for them. So I know some of you watching this are saying, Fisher, this is basic stuff. I do this all the time, but I wanted to make sure we went through this. Again, this is week one, a little slower. If you're not tagging people and you're not sharing posts, you're not going to get a lot of engagement through social media. All right. Now, this is the part where we talk about about how much time you should be doing this. Now, I have been guilty of jumping down the rabbit hole and spending way too much time a day, and I have been very conscious of how much time I spend. Um, now, I have a good portion of my business coming through social media connections, so I probably spend more time than some people because it's been such a good marketing source for me. But ultimately, one good method is to, uh, to, to post maybe three to four times a day and don't worry as much about the time of day that you're posting. Just post when something unique or funny or, or you know, life lesson 
comes to you, something that's worth sharing, something that's part of your story, part of your, part of your TV show, go ahead and, and make a post. And don't necessarily make it um, all about business. Make it about things that are happening in your world. You know, like last night, I was in my office. It was 8 o'clock. And I'm sitting there, and, and I was thinking about logos. So I posted a picture of a fish. At the same time, I'll probably post this tonight, I noticed that, that it, was, it was 8 o'clock and there was nobody in the parking lot. And I'm surrounded by Japanese business stores. And I'm sitting there thinking, yeah, everyone tells me how hard the Asian, working in the Asian culture is. And I'm like the last guy in the office. There's all these Asian businesses and they're all closed down for the weekend. And I'm the only car in the parking lot. That's something that, you know, pretty obvious that, that would be kind of funny to some people if I typed it right on, on social media or on Facebook. So, again, when funny things pop up in your world, when amusing things, when, when heartfelt stories, kids, dogs, puppies, all that stuff is great. Now, here's where, where I think some people go overboard. If all you're ever doing is talking about your business you, and, and you never engage with people as you talked about in the previous pages, you're going to see very few people actually following or paying attention to what you say. So, if most of your posts are, are, are stories and, and they're engaging, you can do things like tag your business page. You say I put a big, a, a big bold or capital letters here. Tag your business page as something that you're, you're doing. You'll see me doing that from time to time. I check into work. I've got something fun to say. I might not be talking about work, but I tag my business pages if I'm at the office. People remember I'm there. Um, the other thing that I would recommend you all do, we talked about this in the beginning, is making sure that your profile, um, you know, again, it's light, fun, and engaging, but you've got maybe a business picture, maybe in your uh, your job description, you've at least got your job posted, people know that you're a realtor, and you're occasionally talking about helping people buy and sell. All right, now, here's slightly more advanced. Some of you that watched the first 10 minutes are like, Fisher, we know this stuff, this is super basic, but here's where it gets good. You can gain a ton of momentum by organizing your friends and groups and perhaps working together to share ideas about what posts work best, uh, to help each other by sharing your content, um, and to help each other by, by what we call building momentum. So if you've got a bunch of people in a group, like for example, many of you are my agent acceleration group. If I post a picture in there about real estate and you know, maybe I go post it on my personal page, I notice a lot of you jump over and like it and share it on your own page. That's a great way to what I, what I mentioned, build momentum. So we're, we're finding information in, in posts that are engaging. We're all sharing them kind of at the same time. Our clients and, and the people in our circle can see that. So, so if we're helping people around us like, share, and comment on posts, we can increase the ability for others to see our posts because our posts become much more popular. So, so joining in groups with your real estate team, with your lender, with your title company, with insurance agents uh, is a great way to help each other build your presence on social media. Now, one great tip that goes along with this, very similar to the BNI theory, givers gain. Uh, if you notice what I do, I share a ton of my friends' posts, whether it's real estate agents or lenders or insurance or title, I share their posts all the time. I'll share them on my personal page. I'll comment on what I think about that person's post. And the more I interact by sharing that person's post, the more that person gets to know me and, of course, helps me share my posts. So you're building groups of people on Facebook, whether you're an admin or whether you're just part of a group. We start helping each other out. You'll find that it comes back to you. You get more traffic. You've got more people interacting with your posts. And as we mentioned, especially if those people in your top 50, 60, or 100 people most likely to help you, you build momentum, you build synergy. So um, now when I'm talking about building a team, I'm not necessarily saying have your assistants do this because I know many of you have assistants. And if you trust your assistant to be you, they better really know exactly what you would say and do at all times because it's hard to be yourself and have somebody else be yourself for you. So so when I say team, I'm talking about perhaps other, another loan officer in your office, another loan officer in a part of the country, a title person, an insurance person, uh, other real estate agents, your, your favorite clients. Again, you can put them all in groups. I see some people organizing themselves in neighborhood groups, in community groups where things are being bought and sold, in um, high school alumni groups, 
in what I talk about on, the, on some of our courses, property groups. So that's more of what I'm talking about, building groups and uh, essentially teams where people understand they're going to help each other out through social media. Okay. Now, we're going to talk a lot about this in the next week, and I don't want to make this week too long. Uh, we're talking about sharing listings now. And this is important because I just talked about being social and having a good profile on social media. One thing I don't want to see you do is only post on social media when you have listings and only putting them on your business page. Without spending ad money, it's not going to do a whole lot. Now, if you are the kind of agent who does that and you come to me and you tell me Facebook doesn't work, I'm going to take a look at what you do and I'm going to tell you, yes, it doesn't work based on what you just did because you need to understand that to be truly effective on social media, unless you want to spend ad money, you have to, again, be social. So um, I was talking to an agent yesterday at a lunch meeting and she mentioned how she loved social media because she talked about what she was doing with her kids, how much she loved her job, how much she loved a TV show, how she was connected with all of her friends and clients, how she connected with her neighborhood community, how she connected with her city and her state. And she was just constantly sharing images. And then when she would talk about her properties and put information out there and ask all of her friends who she had built momentum with to share her listings, everybody was sharing her listings all over the place. So she had a ton of success because she'd already gone through the basics. She'd already built an audience. She already gained lots of momentum from interacting with people. Then when she had new properties, everybody was reminded that she was a realtor because they saw the cool house. She typed up super engaging posts about how cool these houses were, asked the clients and her friends to share them, put multiple images in, shared it on her personal page, on her business page, shared it in local groups. And lo and behold, her properties don't necessarily go viral, but she gets many people reaching out to her asking questions. She gets a lot of business, a lot of buyers and sellers that like what she's doing. Like a TV show, there's a real story. And then guess what? Her listing is a commercial. Hey, I'm a realtor. You've been watching me eat lunch and go to my kids' soccer games and drive around town and laugh with you guys and make videos from time to time. But here's my commercial. Oh, here's my listing. This is what I do for a living. Isn't this a nice house? Just like a, a commercial, nobody's going to watch the commercial. It's super boring, but she makes it exciting. She has good pictures. She has a good story. You want to read the post when you see it. You know, oh, this is so-and-so agent. I like to read about her houses. It's always a fun read. You know, just scroll by them. Okay. Best way to get people to know you through Facebook. Assuming that you filled the audience, assuming that you started to do a little bit on the momentum side, is video. Facebook loves video. And guess what they, they don't love? They don't love YouTube. They don't own YouTube. YouTube's owned by Google. Facebook and Google are arch enemies, number one competitors. So avoid posting YouTube links on Facebook unless you really have to. That's the only way you can find the video. If you are out there making videos, saving them on your phone, go ahead and upload those directly to Facebook. That's the best way to do it. Now, if I had to go in hierarchy, I'd put YouTube last, live video first, Facebook Live, and regular video second. And Facebook Live, since it's somewhat newer, Facebook has really been pushing this and they're doing everything they can to put your live videos in front of as much of your audience as possible. So some people are not comfortable when they're live. The best advice I have for you is just get used to it, start doing it, pretend you're having a conversation with somebody, have folks join you, uh, start your Facebook Live after perhaps thinking about what you're going to talk about for three or four minutes. Um, if you've watched any of my Facebook Live videos, I sometimes ramble a little bit. I've got a point. I might talk for three or four or five minutes, or I might make a Facebook Live of a pre-rehearsed presentation, but I'm certainly not perfect. And I run into people all the time who say, oh yeah, I saw you on Facebook. In fact, I just closed the transaction. This is a true story. Just this week, I closed a transaction who someone who had never met me and they saw me on a plane and they, they Facebook messaged me because they had seen me before on Facebook Live and said, hey, you're Facebook Fisher, aren't you? And I said, oh yeah, you're Craig the agent. I met you in a Facebook group once, didn't I? Yeah, I'm sitting six rows behind you. You're the guy that makes videos about loving to work with veterans, aren't you? 
Yes, I am. Let's talk after we get off the plane, Greg. Great to meet you. I got off the plane, met Craig, chatted about veterans. At the end of the conversation, next time you meet a veteran, send them my way, Craig. Lo and behold, two days later, Craig has a veteran, needs a good lender. We just closed that veteran just a couple weeks ago. That all came from having a presence on Facebook Live, from making videos about things I'm passionate about, by essentially having my own TV show, by engaging with uh, people that, that I like to work with, by real estate agents, by being part of my community, uh, and doing things we just talked about in this hangout. So Facebook Live is a great way to get your message out there, especially if you put a little bit of thought into it before you push the play button. Um, I guess one tip I would give you guys about Facebook Live, try to do it at times a day where people are likely to engage. Um, I personally found like first thing in the morning or closer to the, the, the time when people get home and they're not eating dinner. Uh, if you do it while people are eating dinner, if you do it while people are in the meat of their day at like 10 o'clock to you find less people are engaged because they don't have time because they're busy with other activities. All right. So that concludes week one of Facebook basics. What I want everyone to do if you're new is make sure that you have a Facebook profile, make sure your Facebook profile clearly identifies that you're a real estate agent. If what your profile picture or the pictures on your page in no way, shape or form um, have any kind of professional images, that's okay. But it's nice to some way, shape or form have uh, some kind of indication that you are a realtor. I personally like to have my contact information on my personal page. Uh, I, I know some of you don't put that information on your personal page. That's okay. Make sure though that people can find your business Facebook page through your personal page and that you have some kind of contact information there. So if people are using Google to search you, they will potentially pull up your, uh, your, your business page, your business Facebook page, or your website, and it will have your contact information. So next week, we're going to talk more about building your Facebook presence with a business page through using groups, how to drop your listings in the right place, and how to use single property websites, Listing Booster, specifically to start to gain more contacts. So hopefully this was a great lesson for you. This was week one of Agent Acceleration, and it's Fisher signing out. Message me with any questions. We'll chat soon.